What's going on, Ape Nation? Randall Cornett here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I uh, wanted to make a quick video for you guys. We're going to be talking about the dark pool. And yes, there was some crazy shit that was going on. And we're also going to talk about some of the legal issues that uh, Citadel has had in their past. Um, obviously, uh, not saying, confirming nor denying they're guilty or they're innocent, but just things have been accused of and have paid fine for fines for. So we're going to go over that. But first things first, the dark pool vol volume. So currently right now, 71% of the trades that have ha uh, happened today with AMC have gone through and been done in the dark pool. I don't know if you guys understand how big of a number 70% is like to be over 70% of the trading volume all going to the dark pool. That is absurd it's absolutely nuts this doesn't happen in other stocks where you have 70 percent of something traded um in a dark pool this goes circles all back you've been watching my videos uh to payment for order flow who gets the hands on these orders and what they do with them so obviously if we were working against these hedge funds that have um the benefit and make money by routing our orders to dark pools those are people that are obviously against us and that is a lot of the result of that is payment for order flow so 71% of the volume has been done in the dark pool today so far. But what's really interesting during the Internet outages that happened today, and I know you guys probably heard about it because everybody was on Twitter and it was screaming, you know, Fidelity was down. A lot of the banking websites were down, um, et cetera, et cetera. Turns out that was an Oracle slash Akami issue, which is like a major hosting provider. Um, so it affected a lot of their properties. But what's super interesting about that during that time at its peak, at 12.18 p.m., okay, this is Eastern time, 91% of the volume that was traded during that time, during that little period, was done in the dark pool. I've never seen this before. 91% of all the trades that were happening in that minute were done in the dark pool. And really, when we look at this, if we want to look at this on a minute breakdown, like what we're like, if we want to keep rolling here. So obviously, so look, this is the 91%. I'll make sure I highlight it in blue, actually, for you guys so you can make sure that you see it. So um, we're looking for 12, 18, 91%. So where this is at in blue, but looking like at the time frame, you know, exceeding 12, 18, we see 74%, 78%. And let's like, we can go down the line. Um, hover in the 70s here. I know I did see some 81%, 84%, 82%, 80%, 85%. So this is on a minute by minute uh, play, but this is really what we're doing. So when you have a market that's going and moving into this direction where it's like the institutional investors, people that are not retail. So everybody that's not retail is playing by a different set of rules and has a different toolkit. That's a big problem. It's just not fair. I don't care whatever way you cut it. And uh, there's a reason they do this. And obviously, dark pool, what its intent, what its intention was, is for major players to be able to not, um, you know, dramatically affect the price if you're going to be trading in large blocks. But it wasn't intended for 70 percent or 70 plus percent of, you know, these institutions to be working in it basically stopping the price action, restricting our buy orders. I mean, the list goes on and you guys already all know this. And I'm glad that this is getting traction because it's time. You know what I mean? This this is really needs to be looked at. And I think that we're getting the attention or it's getting the attention that it deserves. So, you know, 71 percent on the day, 0.5. That's absolutely insane. All right. So that's what we got for the dark pool. Now let's move into the this is basically what's known as a broker check uh, check okay and now with a broker check this is from Finra they basically give you all the deets the lowdown on a broker so in this case we're looking at Citadel Securities um, what's crazy about this so if we want to look through so this is uh, the report we can actually look at um, all the different so Citadel Securities doing business as Citadel Securities right main office blah 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 but then they have C H C uh, C S H C Calc IV, IV, here's some of the directors, blah, 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 CEO, we know who that is. And then we see more of their indirect owners. So we'll see Citadel Securities, Citadel Securities LP, GA Fetch, a GFH, sorry, Citadel Securities holding LP. Uh, hang on, we're going to go down because I wanted to show you guys this. Here's all the exchanges that are approved to trade on. But where are we going? So I wanted to show you. Okay, so clearing 
arrangements. This firm does not hold or maintain funds or securities or provide clearing services for other broker dealers. Interesting to note, but they have Citadel Securities America, Citadel Enterprises Americas. This firm does have accounts, funds, or securities maintained by a third party. So Barclays Capital is maintaining um, some sort of financial instrument for them. ABM, AMRO, you've got Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, BOFA, Merrill Lynch. The list goes on. They have Hong Kong prop- property, CSUS, Citadel Securities, GP, right? I uh, Obviously, more Hong Kong stuff, Citadel Securities, Taiwan Limited, Hong Kong, Citadel Securities, CV Limited, Citadel Citadel Securities, Principal Investments, and so on and so forth. You guys kind of get what I'm doing. Australia, they own so many different or affiliated to so many firms, which is why this rabbit hole is so deep, because I'm sure all of these play some sort of role in the greater picture. Now, let me go down and let's look at some of these litigations okay so we could take a look at disclosure events so things arbit- arbitrage and regulatory events 59 of them have been finalized so 59 regulatory events all firms registered to sell securities or provide investment advice are required to disclose regulatory actions criminal or civil du- judicial proceedings and certain financial matters in which a firm or one of its control affiliates has been involved for your convenience below is a matrix of the number and statuses of disclosure events involving this brokerage firm or one of its control affiliates so they don't have any appeal 59 of them have fi- been finalized um so what's really interesting about this is all of their allegations, right, without admitting or denying, and they'll preface all of these findings with them. The firm consented to the sanctions and to the entry of findings that are reported treasury transactions to trade reporting and compliance engine trace that it was not required to report. The, ref- the findings stated that overreporting it recurred when the firm transferred treasury securities within its internal accounts. Overreporting. So they're saying, hey, we're not confirming or denying or admitting or denying, but we're going to consent to the sanctions and we'll pay some sort of fine. And just so we don't have to deal with this anymore, $275,000 fine. It was, was a sanction that was ordered. This was done on March 25th, 2021. Fine paid in full on April 5th. Okay. So again, I have to preface this because I'm not saying they are doing, they're not confirming nor denying. So I'm just saying these are things that they've paid fines for. Um, whether admitting or denying, you know, it's really weird to pay some, pay a fine for something that you're not guilty of, but I understand, Hey, like they don't want to deal with it or whatever. So that was one report. So now if we want to look at a different one, uh, the firm consented to censure and agreed to pay 275,000 to FINRA to settle charges with the firm, with the firm and it paid on April 5th. Again, without admitting or denying, the firm consented to the sanctions and to the entry of findings that are reported equity sell transactions to the FTNRF with an inaccurate short sell indicator. The findings stated the firm released a new system designed to implement the new order marking and trade reporting reporting methodologies required pursuant to regulation show FAQ 2.5 and FINRA trade reporting FAQ 407, respectively. However, the firm inadvertently admitted one of its execution systems as part of the release. So inaccurate short sell indicators. They basically didn't include one of their execution systems into one of the reports and they were fined for that. (coughs) Okay. Paid $180,000 for this. Okay, another fine, $180,000. The firm consented to a censure and agreed to pay 180K without admitting denying again. The firm consented to the sanctions and to the entry of findings that failed to demonstrate eligibility of the Exchange Act rule exception by making a contemporous record of information in connection with quotations. The findings stated that the firm required its broker dealer clients to affirm on a blanket or order by order basis that relevant orders sent to it were unsolicited in order to comply with the exception. So uh, let's see here. 
The firm required each broker dealer client to execute an unsolicited order letter kept on file in which the client representative would only send unsolicited orders to the firm. Broker dealer clients that did not execute unsolicited orders letters could affirm that orders sent to them firm were unsolicited on an order by order basis. So sending out unsolicited orders and they paid a fine of what is it? $30,000 here. And I'm trying to see if I can find some of the bigger ones again, without admitting or denying, uh, the firm consented that to the sanctions and to the entry of the findings that it traded ahead of certain OTC customer orders. So they're front running. So they got accused of front running orders, trading ahead of certain active OTC customer orders. This is a market maker doing this guys. They paid $700,000 for that fine. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, Citadel failed to close out a fail to deliver position in one equity, equity security within the prescribed time. Affected short sales in an equity security for which it had not closed out a fail to deliver position without first borrowing or entering a bona fide arrangement to borrow the security. Sounds familiar. Getting in trouble for basically not closing out FTDs. They were fined $10,000 for this. It's a slap on the wrist. Another $10,000 fine. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's some... Uh, Citadel Securities did not have written policies and procedures to prevent the execution or display of short sell orders at prices less than or equal to the current MBB when a circuit breaker was in effect. So some other crazy shenanigan shit, right? And look at the exchanges that are initiating this, right? So this is some off exchange shit right here that they got caught for. And um, this list, guys, goes on and on and on, right? Again, fine for the same thing. No written policies to prevent the execution or display of short sell orders at prices less than or equal to the current NBB. So they're just basically not even following the NBBOs when it comes to uh, legal bid and ask spreads. Paid another $15,000 for that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so that's pretty much, like I said, I don't want to just go through and drone on about all of these different litigations that they're going through. But um, I just wanted to say that show you guys that these guys, it's not above them to do some illegal shit. Um, whether they were guilty or not, these are things that still should be red flags. And so I will link this um, broker check in the uh, description below so you guys can go ahead and look at it as well. Um, okay, look at this interesting one. For the sole purpose of settling the dis the the disciplinary proceeding for the sole purpose of settling. So they were getting in trouble for something without education of any issues or law and without admitting or denying allegations or finding Citadel securities. The firm stipulated that on at least 41 instances between March, 2013 and December, 2014, the relevant period, it routed agency orders to BZX and eg executed those orders as principal without first exposing them on BZX for at least one second. So they're skipping possible executing on, you know, maybe exchanges that they're supposed to be. Again, like there's just all kinds of different shit. Failure delivers, failure to report uh, short positions, front running. And again, I have to stress these were not, they did not admit or deny these. They just paid the fines basically to kind of get rid of this type of exposure. So I want you guys to keep that in mind because they're not actually proven guilty. So with that being said, I think that's about it. That's about all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and you guys got something from this video. If you enjoyed the content, please do me a huge favor, subscribe, like all that good stuff. It does me a huge favor and I will catch you guys in the next video. Love you a long time. Peace.